welcome back to the channel uh, today we're going to be talking about the namespaces and uh, custom routes um, in our rest api the reason is um that classic press already by default gives you um, particular endpoints that are taken up by the software for example the oembed under the wp um, uh, version 2 and version 1 are namespaces already taken so when you go to the wordpress.org uh, developer subdomain uh, you find that in the rest api handbook you're given uh, ideas of how to actually go about modifying and making your own custom endpoints and we see um, even some sample code of how to basically start our own uh, route uh, by adding a custom, by adding the latest post uh, title or author. And that's what we are going to just uh, jump on. And that's what we're going to use to springboard into our own idea. So they give a very good explanation of what namespaces are, what routes are, what endpoints are. So this is stuff that you can read and make yourself aware. So you get a good explanation of what namespaces are, what endpoints are, what routes are, and the arguments that are needed. And it's good for you to get yourself acquainted with this information. Now it would be a terrible idea for you to play around in the same namespaces, assuming that Classic Press decides to make some changes in the it's in its system. Um, that would end up breaking your, your data or it would end up breaking your site. So the best idea actually is for you to create your own namespaces and to create your own routes. And uh, that's what we're going to be looking at today. So I'm just scrolling through and looking at the namespaces that are already existing and that are already taken up. So by default, this is, uh, we usually have our domain. Then we have the wp-json, which is already uh, by default, how you add and make your own custom uh, endpoints. So when you look at, uh, at the different namespaces like Oembed, however, if we're going to the default uh, WP version 2, uh, which came from WordPress, you find that this is where actually most of the data comes from. And actually, if we run this and add on uh, posts to this and, and hit enter, we start seeing that how our posts come up, our default posts come up, with the different uh, GUID, the slags and titles and everything actually comes on point. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our own, own namespace uh, that we are going to shoot our data from. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to be watching uh, this namespace area and then we shall look at the routes of uh, what we do as we continue to code our for our custom endpoints uh, on our REST API. So what we'll do is I will dive into our editor. So I've created a file called a lab custom endpoints and I've basically put uh, the starter files and details that are needed. If you don't know what these are, you should be able to watch uh, the first video I did um, about the, the must use plugin. So the next thing we're going to do is that we're going to use a hook called add action. And what we're going to do is terminate it here so we'll need to use the REST API init hook. And what it's going to take in is we're going to add a function that we shall call a get district. Uh, and we shall denote it with our own name. So we shall call it lab get district. And what we're going to do is create this uh, function down here in our, in our page. We now need to use the default register rest roots function that is in classic press and it takes three uh, three parameters. One is the name press that we're going to be working with and I'm not going to interfere with uh, the default uh, WordPress rest API namespaces uh, that are already taken up by WP slash V2. So I'm going to create my own and I'll call it maps. And the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, I need to add the next uh, re requirement or argument that is passed in this particular function, which is adding a root, a, a, a route name. Route is actually the right name. So we'll have our namespace called map, and then we'll have our route called district. So lastly, we're going to put our last argument. We're going to put our last argument, which is an array. And that takes in a, a couple of uh, uh, things. It takes in first of all the method 
um, we know that um, APIs, especially REST APIs, all APIs in general, take about a number of methods. We have the get method that returns information just for the user, and then we have the post which sends information uh, to, to the server, then we have update, delete, and so on, which can be used to exchange uh, lots of information. So we're going to be giving information to our users, so we'll use the get. And then the next thing that it takes in is that it's going to require a callback. And this callback is basically a simple function that will uh, input information onto our, our route on our endpoint. So I'm just going to give it a function which I'll call um, get district information. And this is the, the function itself that we're going to use. So we'll write a function for it here. And then inside it, we're going to use we're going to use the default method of rest ensure response, which makes sure that uh, our particular endpoint is actually getting some information. So what we'll do is we're going to call this uh, API works just to shout out something, and this has to be returned so that there is a uh, information on our endpoint. So what we're going to do is now is going to go to our browser and we're going to reload. So when we reload it, actually, you get to see that our namespaces before were just two, but now we have a new namespace here called map. And so when we go, when we go into our routes here, when we go into our routes, we actually see that uh, there are a number of uh, things to pick from. So we have the default ombed, uh, ombed one, two, and then we have our namespace of map showing up here and it has a method of get, and it has a number of methods in there. And then finally, we come to the namespace of map districts that has get, and then it has also a method, uh, a route of map districts. So when I click this, we actually get to see what's on our endpoint, and we actually have our API works here. And in its raw form, it's just a particular text. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to query for the terms of our districts and then I'm going to shoot them on this endpoint and so we're going to jump in and see how that looks like. Alright so now what we're going to do is we're going to pass in here a variable which I'm going to call details and basically it's just going to be an array of information. Now for what we need our details to be, first of all we're going to register it as an array so we'll say is equal to one empty array uh, this is the old way of doing uh, PHP for an array. However, you can be modern about it depending on your server and you just use those brackets to show that it's an empty array. Now what we'll do next is we're going to get our terms and we'll just say terms is equal to get terms, which is a default word term method. And this method uh, takes in an argument of, it takes in the arguments. So you post pass in an array and then you, of course, pass in that you want to query for the taxonomy that is called a uh, district. Um, remember that when we are registering our, when we are registering our post taxonomy, our we had district as our, our. So you pass in district, and then you also choose to say that all districts to be returned, whether they have any content in them or not. We can hide even if it says uh, this person is empty. So we hide and say this should be false. Uh, hide empty should be false. So we say this should be false and then uh, we save that. So the next thing that hands our content, it returns our content. So we'll say for each term that is returned, so for each terms as term, we're now just going to loop over our result. Uh, what we're going to do is say, let's get details. We're going to push in an array of information and basics. We're going to pass in what we know is a name. And then for that name, we're going to pass in the term. And then in we know in each term something is going to come back and we know that we're going to get a name as a part of the term, so you can actually get this information by looking up uh, 
by looking that up in your browser so you can look up how to google terms so you can actually look that up and then you find that information you can actually look up uh, how to find terms and return the names that come and then the next thing that i want to do is i also just want to pass an id just uh, for the for right now and then uh, i know when i pass this id i'm going to just get the term and then in that particular i just want the term id so the term id is actually just coming from uh, my query of the terms when i save this here it should be equal to so once we save this and then just come back here to our api and refresh this page we actually realize that we have two two pieces of information coming back in from here so if i run back into our plugin uh, into our admin dashboard here and we go to villages and go to districts uh, we are going to find that we have two pieces of information here so let me just add another district which i'll call arua arua is not anything so i'll just save this district so we have a new district called arua here and whenever we add anything new for our clients or the people using our api they will be automatically added with this information that i can even have someone who has no technical knowledge on how to update so so having made our new districts come in here the next thing that i'm going to work on is actually the other items like the sub counties so i'm going to go through the same thing you can try to also make your counties under the namespace of map add county or district or whatever it is and so that the next time we meet we are actually uh, being on the same page if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to our channel and make sure you click on that bell icon just don't miss up on any update enjoy the rest of your day coding bye bye